This is the 21st of April of 2023, and the title of this message is Time for Battle. Before we go further, we're going to pray. Father, I thank you to have another time to be in your presence, to seek your face, because your word says, with all your learning, get understanding, and that's what we're seeking right now, understanding and knowledge. Father, I ask you to bless everyone that tuned in to study with me. Holy Spirit, I ask you to touch every word that goes out. And Father God, I ask you to touch my eyes, my understanding, and my speech in Jesus' name. First, we're going to read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3 to 5. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and pray. And proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. And Judea gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judea, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judea and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Okay, so we see that the first thing the Israelites did, in fact, this is... This goes for all the wars that the Israelites went and fought. This is not just an isolated instant. This is all their wars. First thing that they did was go and seek the face of the Lord, ask for guidance and wisdom and what they should do. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, we're going to look at Second Chronicles 20, verse 12. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. Remember, they're searching out the word from God. Okay, Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. I'm sorry, 7... Uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17 first. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And he said the same thing to um, Joshua. Okay, and so we're going to look now. We're going to look at Second um, Chronicles twenty, verse twenty. And they arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tico. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, "Hear me, O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets." so shall ye prosper. Okay, so every battle they went out and and they, they every battle they did this and then they went out and they sent the singers first. Singers and worshipers were always first and then the instruments and then the mighty men and then the regular army. Okay, so Make yourself ready for battle, and we're going to see how we do that. Okay, first we humble ourselves, and we ask God to forgive us. Okay, when you're righteous, and that's what makes you righteous, is when you ask for forgiveness. You ask Father God in Jesus' name for, for forgiveness. We know to do that today, as after the cross. So, you ask Him for forgiveness, and then He sees you through the blood of his son that is awesome to know that because if you humbly repent so in other words is a heart issue god knows your heart and by the way god is the only one that knows a person's heart he's the only one that's allowed to judge the heart the way someone's thinking now we as believers in fact this is exactly what the world does because you have to judge in order to know what to do what's right and what's wrong to begin with so believers, 
you you um, judge the actions of an individual. That's what we're required to do. Okay, we're going to look at Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse twenty-one. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of his ho of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Wow. So after Jesus came to the earth, those that would accept him he gave you authority. And then you say authority over what? Authority over Satan. Authority over demons. Authority to get through this world system. Okay? Authority to cast out demons. Authority to heal the sick and raise the dead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He's equipped us with spiritual weapons. Okay, and that's another study, and I might be able to touch a little bit on that if this doesn't, if this uh, video doesn't go that long. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Matthew 10, verse 8. Okay. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. And we'll stop and interject right here. This was translated wrong. And there's an excellent study by um, John Paul Jackson. He's passed away now, and since I've learned from him. And uh, he showed where, when in some instances in the word here, the word for demons was translated devils. And the word for devils was translated demons. Because, see, we know that there's only one devil. That's Lucifer. That old serpent. Satan. Okay? And then we know that demons are many. So, a big giveaway here is there's an S behind devils. That should have been translated demons. Thank you, Jesus, for that knowledge. Because Jesus commanded Satan to leave him, believers can too. And I'll show you the scripture here. Luke 4, 10. Luke 4, verse 8. Luke 4, verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. See, Satan told him to leave. Now, mind you here, he didn't leave because, you know, he'd done his job or he'd done what he wished to do. Satan left for a more, more opportune time. See, when he was sick, when he was hanging on the cross. See, Satan's sneaky. Demons are sneaky. John, we're going to look at John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to, unto my Father. Okay? Note that, that uh, this, this means that you are responsible to command demons to leave. It, let's read this again. This is Jesus speaking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Now, it's not because we're better or greater than Jesus was. That's ludicrous to think that way. It's because there's more of us, more believers to do this. Hallelujah. Let's look at Isaiah 54, verse 17. Isaiah 54. Isaiah is awesome. 
verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Let's reread that again, but put you, and then in that you, you can put your name. Like when I read it, I say Kathy, because it's talking to you. Think about that. It's just like Psalms and some other places. Psalms 91 is a great example where it says, uh, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide by, uh, by under the shadow of the Almighty, and he will say, but anyhow, and it goes on, and when he's saying he, put your name in there. You can put she in there. You can put he in there. Make it personal because it's talking to you. Remember, the scriptures um, are talking to you because they're alive. The word tells us live and sharper than any two-edged sword. So we want to remember that the word over the hundreds of years here has been preserved. And what's been preserved in the King James Version, or the scrolls in other words, is enough to save your soul. And for you to understand who Jesus is, what was prophesied before, what came to pass, how he walked on the earth, that's the Gospels, what he did, we need to learn from him. And then how, and then what happened to him, and then what will happen. So it's awesome, the um, integrity of the word. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I've done a, a study on, um, on how the scriptures were translated from 1611 to modern times. So you go back and listen to that. Now let's read this again and make it personal. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shalt condemn. And we'll stop right there because right here is it's make, making it personal it goes directly to you see where they have the thou and the thee and the ye put your name there put a he or a she there do you understand what i'm saying no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment i shall condemn okay now let's say it in a different way no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shout condemn now let's look at that word shout s-h-a-l-t it's the same as shall s-h-a-l-l -L. that means it will happen Period, whether you want it or not, it will happen. So you can put a period there. It will happen. And it's what he's saying. You are responsible for casting demons out. I've heard so many people, they got it wrong, and I don't know how. It's just like that judge scripture. If you don't go back and study that. And, and, the, and the other one is um, women keep silent in the church. And then all sorts of things, and they make up these things in their mind, especially men for some reason. And I'm finding women doing the same thing because they're listening to this. Like, like that, when they, Paul said to be quiet, you got to go back and understand the culture, the time, who was being spoken to. Why was that said? It wasn't because women were hated so much and nobody wanted to hear from them. It was a fact that in these meetings, in the synagogue at that time, I don't know, I've never been in a synagogue, modern times, obviously. So in that time period, in that culture, the synagogue was separated. There was a lattice wall down, down the middle. There was some studying on it. And men were on one side, women were on the other side. And then uh, what women were doing, what the wives were doing, hey, Charlie, what was he saying? I don't know what he's talking about. What did he, what did he say? What does that mean? Paul said, like the scriptures tell us, God is not the author of confusion. So he said, be quiet. Ask your husbands at home. It's not that the husbands knew more than the preacher or knew more than the, the apostle that was teaching. Obviously, it's, it's that 
it's that um, to in order to preserve peace and structure and order in the service that's what he said so you can go do a word study he wasn't telling women you're you're dirt although in that culture women uh when they uh testify to something most men didn't believe it but see i praise god that the godly men could understand that they a woman is a helpmeet. A woman is a wife and husband. There's there to walk side by side and help each other. He's not to punch it, use her as a punching bag or a doormat or a verbal assault wall. He's to love his wife and G, and even uh, the word says Jesus said, "You shall love." Was it Jesus? But the word itself says, "You shall love your wife as Christ loved the church." Talking to men. He didn't say beat them up, make them black and blue, treat them like dogs, treat them worse than animals, and you should never treat them. It also, it says in Proverbs, you know, that's a godly man that treats his animals good. And I'm asking our study on itself. I'm going to leave that there. But I want you to understand that you're being told the truth. The truth is you are responsibility have a responsibility you are responsible in other words to cast out demons i pray that you catch on to what i'm saying i'll make sure that i talk to you about what holy spirit has had on my heart so beings now that i've told you your blood is not going to be on my my hands. If I know something and Holy Spirit's dealing with me about it and tell, saying to get it out there and tell people, and I don't tell people, and that person dies in that sin or dies not knowing what God told me to do, tell, told me to do, told me to say, I'm responsible for your blood, even though you died in your sins and you should have known better. I'm responsible for it. You'll be judged. That is your responsibility. And that is your, uh, you'll get your punishment for that. But I will also be punished because I did not tell you. Now that I told you, your blood is not on my hands. Period. It's your decision. It's a hard issue, like I've been saying. See, because the time is short and it's getting shorter. And Satan is angry that I am teaching this stuff that I'm spreading this word in fact um, God gave me a, a vision I mean it was a slight vision it was a vision and it showed Satan and the demons around him were red faced but him I was focusing on Satan himself Satan's face is extremely red because he's so angry at me that I'm uh, that I'm telling you this stuff. So that the time of playing is over, and it's time to get serious. Start warning others, and now is the time to make a decision for Jesus. And we're going to look at John chapter fifteen, verse twenty-two. John fifteen twenty-two. I wonder if I marked that one. I guess I didn't. John 15, 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. So I pray that the message pierces your heart and you understand. You know, Father God set their heart aflame. Set their heart for the desires of only you and more of you and more of you and more of the Holy Spirit gifts. I release the fire of God onto everyone that is listening to my voice. Fire from the Almighty God. Fire in Jesus' name. Followers of Christ must do their part. That part is casting out demons and Satan. It's telling Satan to take a hike. 
basically that's what Jesus said. Get behind me, Satan. Take a hike. Get out of my face. You're teaching nothing but lies and deception and falsehoods. So believers must learn. Actually, this is another thing. We are required to do certain things. You're required in, in, to gain entrance into heaven. To gain entrance, you have to accept Christ as your Savior. And you don't just do it by your mouth and say, I accept him and go on and that's all there is to it. That's, a, that's, that's not from the heart. That's true repentance is turning from that wicked way or that sin or something that doesn't please God. So it's turning from that sin and focusing on Christ. In this case, the Holy Spirit draws you to repentance. You start crying and you're bad, you're sad. And you know, if you have, when you have the Holy Spirit living in you, if you do something that is not pleasing to the Holy Spirit, or to God, in other words, you will be convicted for it. And that's the time to turn around. Just doesn't matter. Swallow your pride. Get rid of pride. Get rid of it. Get rid of pride and arrogance. Turn around for your own soul's sake and ask for forgiveness. Hey, I did this. I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean it. Or I did do it and I shouldn't have done it. And I apologize for that. Forgive me. However you want to say, but you, you repent right away. As soon as Holy Spirit brings it to your attention, makes you feel bad about something. If he makes you feel bad about something, that's what happened. It's something that he don't like, and you better repent of it. Quickly, too. And then you can be back in the graces of God, and he can see you through the blood of Christ as soon as you repent. It's a heart issue. So just saying, I believe in Jesus, is not going to gain you entrance into heaven. But I'm saying when you do accept Jesus... It takes the Holy Spirit to draw you to repentance. You accept Jesus or Christ, yeah, Jesus as your Savior. That takes Holy Spirit to draw you to the cross. Then, as a norm, and what we should do now, remind you, we should go and be, get water baptism because that tells everybody around you that you're serious and you've accepted Christ as your Savior. Now. It's not going to gain you entrance into heaven because, like I said, it's a heart issue. And I'll continue to say it's a heart issue. So you can say, I believe, and then come get baptized. And you know more converted than, than a drunkard and somebody that doesn't know nothing about Christ. So listen to what I'm saying. Don't be deceived. Somebody is telling you all you got to do is believe. Don't believe it. Ask Father God about it if you don't believe me. So... Uh, you accept him, you get water baptized, and that's righteous on your part. But uh, water baptism, like I said, does not save a soul. Only the blood of Jesus Christ saves a soul. So with a heart issue, and you do it, you're showing everybody that you've changed. Now, uh, then you ask Holy Spirit, because see, once you do that, you want to be as close as you can to your Creator, as close as you can to your Savior. So you ask him, just a second for if you know about the baptism and a good preacher would have told you this this is what you do after you do this and this God knows your heart like I said the heart issues some people as soon as they accept Jesus they start speaking in tongues because they're praising him and they're praising him from the heart and when you praise him from the heart Holy Spirit will speak through you. That means you got the baptism of the Holy Spirit without you saying, Father God, I know about it. Show me and, and, and dwell me. Most people don't understand this stuff. So they say, uh, you know, I just learned about um, your baptism. You got several baptisms. I see in your word. I just learned about your baptism. Lord, I want all you got to give me. Baptize me with that. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Now, in that case... You start praising God, and you start praising Jesus, the Holy Spirit will start speaking through you in an unlearned language, and you want to let him speak as much, as often, and daily. And then when you do, because when you start, it's going to start like, it's going to sound like baby talk, like garble. So the you, you, more you let him speak, the more defined that language is going to be. Now, mind you, i got to add in this, because I always get criticized. Your Holy Spirit is one spirit that manifests in many different ways. Now, I should just do a study, another study, in fact, because I've done studies and I put messages up on Facebook and other places about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because remember, I just said it's one spirit manifests in different ways. So one of those ways that he manifests 
So you know you have salvation and no demon in hell and no person on earth can tell you you don't have your soul saved. That will not be able to tell you that when you cross over, hey, you're going to be in glory. You'll know that without a shadow of a doubt. So that's, that's a short description of what I'm talking about, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Father God, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit are gentlemen. They're so gentle and they're so loving and caring. They want you to love them. It's like Father God wants you to love him for who he is, not for what he can give. And he will never force himself on you. So he'll never force himself on anyone. You ask for it. And I said, there are instances where your heart is so pure, so focused on, on Christ or Jesus, you know, because you just gave your heart to him, he'll come automatically. But you still have to want him. You have to desire all of him. It's a heart issue. So, Holy Spirit does that, and that's how you know that you have eternal life with your Creator, with, with uh, Christ Jesus, with Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay, so you know what you go on to when you go on, and that's what you want to do. You want to go further into knowing about Jesus, knowing, you know, and knowing about Father God and and what Father God wants out of you and know more about Holy Spirit and your best friend. So <clears throat> you want to know what you want to start learning is who you are in Christ, what authority he gave you, what he expects out of you you know, what a disciple is, what a follower of Christ is, and you're an ambassador for him now because you're going to spread his word. You know about him. You're a mouthpiece for him. The word says that the believers are the church, so the individual is the church. The individual makes up the church. The individual is the body of Christ. The hands, the feet, the eyes, all the body parts of Christ. So this is what I'm saying. And through the studies that you'll do on, on, like I said, who you are and what, the, what he expects out of you and what your responsibility are, is, and who your enemy is, who humanity's enemy is, is Satan and demons. How to cast them out, how to talk to people and to demons. You know, this is what you want to study. And then Holy Spirit will lead and guide you. Once you have Holy Spirit living in you, he changes you from the inside out. And people will see it that are around you because your attitude will change. Your skin will change. In fact, you'll have a glow. The closer you get to a, that strong relationship, the closer you get to Christ, the more Holy Spirit you have, the more evidence that it's going to be pouring out of you. You'll have a glow, like I said. It's awesome. It is awesome. Praise Jesus. You'll praise him anywhere. You know, and Jesus told the Samaritan woman at the well, because she's changing the subject here. Hey, he wanted to focus on her. She says, no, you got, you Jews tell us we got, a, you know, we worship and we're supposed to worship only in Jerusalem. And she says, but our gods worship here in, in, in Samaria. And I don't remember the, the place, whatever she said after that. But he said, there's going to come a time and the time is now. He's still walking the earth. The time is now to worship God. God is a spirit and you must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's saying that time is then. He was telling her it was now. So it was then. And you think how close we are to his coming now? So but the thing is he's saying true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. The only way that you can do that is having Holy Spirit indwell in you and speaking through you. This means that it doesn't matter where you're at. You hallelujah. You let Holy Spirit speak through you wherever you're at, whoever you're talking to. You can pray for other people. You can the tongues, you know, will come out. Holy Spirit will speak through you. You don't have to be standing in front of a priest. You don't have to go to a priest or a man or a woman or anybody else and say, Oh, well, I did this sin, I did this sin, I did this not pleasing to you, I know whatever. My past, here's my past, and i got to tell you about it. And no, and the guy says, the priest says, he'll oh, say 10 Holy Marys, or whatever they say. Hail Marys, say 20 or 50 rosary prayers. This is what uh, Jesus is saying. <clears throat> the time's now, and there's another place in there where Paul says, the uh, your salvation is closer than what you expect. Is closer now than when you first believed, is what he said. 
Today is a day of salvation. Now, okay, we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. Ezekiel 3, 18 and 19. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn, turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquities. But thou shalt be delivered thy soul. You shall deliver thy soul. You have, as if you have delivered thy soul. In other words, if you know something to do and you know right and you don't tell that person that's doing wrong, nay, that's wrong, you know, that's wrong. I don't like that. Repent. And they die, you're, you'll will be paying for his blood. You will be required to pay for him. So that's what he's saying. And that's what I'm telling you. I'm letting you know. My hands are clean. Father Yahweh, I ask you to direct your anger. Actually, let me say something before I start this prayer. If, you have, if you're angry because of what I say, because of what I share, I ask you to direct your anger to Father God in Jesus' name. Tell him how you feel. He wants to hear that. Ask him for revelation. Please ask him for revelation. Okay? Don't bother to attack me. I'll just block you. And I had to write this down so I wouldn't forget to say it. So, if you feel truth is not for you. Just unfriend me. Don't attack me. So I've just made Satan red-faced, angry. Because of what I've shared with you. Actually, there's looks like there's two other scriptures in John. I didn't have him marked for some reason. Okay, we'll look. John 15. Verse 22. Let me see. Did I say that to you? I will do it again. John 15, 22. If I didn't. If I had not come and spoken unto them, I had uh, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. And the next one is John 15, verse 18. John 15, 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. And here's what he was saying. There's no sense in uh, giving me hateful words. Because you're going to... You're going to have to give an account to God for those words. In fact, let me share you share. Well, there's two places actually. The one says, "Who do you think you are that that you go after another man's servant to his master? He fall or he stand?" And he's and God. It says he's God. God, in fact, is talking. He is capable of making him stand. Verse 1821. I'm sure you know this one. Pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. Yep. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Okay. That's it for my message.
I've done what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do. Father Yahweh, I thank you for the teaching that's gone out today. Father, please put a hedge of protection to protect all of those that have heard this message. Put a hedge of protection, Father, in Jesus' name. I know that Satan will try to rob them of a blessing. Stay his hand. Stay the wickedness that the desires to take the good seed from your children. And that's what he wants. He wants to take the seed that was planted from you. Keep your arms around your babies. We have no one but you who loves us and protects us. Send your hosts of heaven to surround us and keep us in perfect peace. In Jesus' name.